OpenAI has finally released their new model of ChatGPT called O1 Preview. Now, this model has also been referred to as Project Strawberry and it's finally released. In this video, I'm going to be giving you 12 use cases and I'm not going to be coding the game of Snake or taking you through any boring rubric. These are going to be hands-on use cases. We're going to be building web applications. We're going to be getting into detailed planning, next level brainstorming techniques, problem solving paradigms, and so much more. The power of this model feels like you're talking to a PhD level human. It feels like you're speaking to an expert in any field. And you can really use this model for more thoughtful tasks in many different sectors, which we're going to get into. I mean, as you can see with the red and the yellow compared to GPT-40, this model is absolutely killing it. Even this one with the green as the human on the right, it's outperforming expert PhD level humans in science questions. Now this model really stands out in the following categories. It's not really flashy with new features and or advanced voice features with multimodality, but what it does really good is cipher, coding, math, crosswords here, English, science, safety, and health science. It's absolutely changing the game with its new accuracy and also its new chain of thought prompting method that's actually baked in to the model. Now, if you want to leverage artificial intelligence to its maximum potential in order to increase productivity, save you hours of your time, increase efficiency on any task, whether it's for work or for personal life, then I highly recommend joining my AI foundation community. I will be leaving a link in the top pinned comment or the description below. Now, this is where you really develop an edge for artificial intelligence. It's the number one community and we have everything. We have up-to-date AI news. We have plenty of different courses for learning every sector of AI in order to make your life efficient. We have a calendar with multiple different live calls we're doing per week. We're giving away rewards. It's a network of people leveraging artificial intelligence within their industry, and we all come together as one brain and one mind. This is truly the spot to get an edge and to get ahead with AI. Use case number one is to animate anything. You have the ability to create simulations or animations in order to better help you see something. If you're a very visual learner or if you like seeing how things move, then this one is going to be for you. So I have this prompt here and this would be very difficult to send off to GPT-40 and actually get a good response on the first prompt. But what I can do is I can change my model up here in the upper left hand corner to 01 preview, the most advanced model. And I can send off this prompt and basically what I'm doing here is I'm going to create an animation or a simulation of a heartbeat and I want a custom slider that I can actually control the BPM or the beats per minute of that heartbeat. And I just want to show you what it's capable of in only a single prompt. Look at all these instructions I'm providing. Don't necessarily look at the example and take it for face value, but think about how you can apply this and use this model and using prompts that require advanced reasoning. So look at all this stuff I'm giving it. I say, create me a visualization using React, CSS, JavaScript, and HTML that would show a heart beating, simulating actual movements with an adjustable BPM meter that changes the heartbeat speed based on how your heart would actually beat. And then I give some bullet points. Make the heartbeats big and dramatic so the user can easily see what's going on. Make the BPM adjuster a slider bar. Ensure you make this into one HTML.index file. That way when I upload it to VS Code in order to show you, it's super easy. And also make sure you are simulating real heartbeat movements based on your BPM meter. Let's send this off using O1 Preview and you're going to be able to get a feel for how ChatGPT is actually thinking through this process and mapping it out compared to the original models. Now, of course, we're going to sacrifice some speed, but what we're going to get is a much more accurate response. So if you look right here, it has all of the different things that it's doing in order to create this animation. It's setting up a plan, it's creating a structure, setting up React, setting up the component. It's doing all sorts of different things before it even gives me my response. It's kind of creating this plan, it's checking for constraints and then it's giving me everything that I need. Okay, so take a look at this. Right now it's animating the beats and it's just in the thinking process. And just like that, it thought for 42 seconds, okay? That's a long time, but the response is so accurate. Let's take a look at this. It's giving me the HTML index file as I asked. And then it's giving me an explanation and instructions to run. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a folder and I'm going to call it heart. I'm going to open up VS Code and then open that folder I just created. So I'm going to go to my desktop, open up the heart folder, and then I'm just going to create a new file and call it index.html. I'm going to hit enter and then I'm just going to paste in that code and then save this code. Now when I go back to that folder I just created because I opened it here, 
what you're going to notice is I have this little icon that I can open it up in Chrome to see this animation in action. So I'm going to open that up. And as you can see, what we have here is an actual heartbeat simulation. And it's actually taking into account the amount of times a heart is beating. So if I have this adjusted down to 48 BPM, the heart is going to beat slower. And remember, I created this all with a single prompt. I can crank it up. And as you can see, this is like you're running. And this is actually a pretty good pace, the 180. This is when you're super tired. But it's very dynamic, very functional, interactive. And we did this with a single prompt. Use case number two is detailed planning. You can go much more detailed than ever before in any large language model when using the new O1 model for complex plans with lots of instructions and lots of information to take in. So that's what we're going to do. So I have this very large prompt that I'm about to send off in O1 in order to create me a detailed business plan and funnel. What this prompt consists of is a goal. So I want it to create a business plan and a funnel for my artificial intelligence education company. I give it some metrics. So I give it where I have my AI Foundations community, where I get most of my traffic, LinkedIn, TikTok that I don't currently post on, but I want to start posting on, and a newsletter in here. So I just gave it some arbitrary information just so I wasn't giving away anything sensitive, but then I give it an action. I say, help me develop my business plan and funnel in order to optimize the flow of traffic in a way that can help me 5x my school page visits, the AI Foundations About page. So this is the prompt I'm going to be using, okay? I just wanted to explain it so you knew it was happening when I was sending off this large prompt. I'm going to send it off now while in 01, and what you're going to notice is it's going to start thinking for longer than usual. It's figuring out the approach, creating a marketing strategy for me, assessing each platform's impact that I listed here. And what you're going to notice is these prompts are so much longer than any other large language model on the market right now. It gives me a company overview with my name. It gives me a mission, a clear goal. It gives me services I can provide, a target audience, market analysis. I encourage you to pause the screen and read this. I just went through it and it's absolutely insane. It gives me a complete marketing plan for call to actions, content expansion. Each platform, it goes in depth. And then it gives me something for my newsletter. Then it gives me a marketing funnel optimization, okay? So just take a look at everything it's literally applying into this one response after thinking for only 23 seconds. And it is a longer output time, but the response is so much more clear. So I highly recommend getting your detailed planning done with this new O1 model. Use case number three is to use O1 for advanced explanations. It can go super in depth when it's giving you an explanation because not only will the model look at its previous response and explain to you how it got there, but it will think about how it's going to look at that previous response. So there's another layer added in and it just helps it give you a better understanding in order to provide sustainable deep learning about why something works, not just getting the answer, but understanding the why to it. So if we go back and we could just piggyback off that last one that we just created, this huge business plan, uh, what we can do is we can either drop this down and take a look at how it got there, but maybe we want it to explain how it got there and why it did the things it did in order to give me this long detailed business plan and marketing funnel for my company. So I can scroll down and with a simple prompt, I highly recommend you give this prompt a try. You can get very detailed and in-depth explanations for why ChatGPT did something. So I say, explain to me how you came to the conclusion to use this method in the route I could go next time in order to figure this out on my own. That's important because you want it to explain it to you so that you can do it on your own. And then I say, give me a sustainable understanding of why this works. And then I can just send that off. And if I stay in my same chat thread, then it's going to use that information from above as well. And as you can see, it's really thinking about this. It's not just spitting out hallucinations. It's evaluating strengths and weaknesses, charting the course, the org diagnosis. As you can see, it thought for 30 seconds. It thought about the methodology of the planet created longer than it thought about the planet created. Think about how powerful that is. So it gave it the title of explanation of methodology and how to develop your own business plan and marketing funnel. It goes into an introduction and it gives in-depth instructions for how it did it. It said conduct a situation analysis and it said it used the SWOT analysis and how I can do it, why it works, defining clear goals, develop a marketing funnel. I mean, just look at all this information that went into developing that plan for me. It's really thinking this through, not only on the planning side of things, but also on the explaining side of things. So I highly recommend that you use this new O1 model for having ChatGPT explain its reasoning on how it came to its conclusion or how it got its answer. This is going to help mitigate hallucinations as well.
Use case number four is to create informational dashboards with the power of O1's code. So what do I mean by an informational dashboard? Well, this is going to be a way that you can actually use ChatGPT in order to create code for you to set up an informational dashboard based on a large amount of text. This is going to help you understand things better, help you see things in a more visual way, and also help you have a lot more fun when learning and researching and aggregating information. So as you can see highlighted in yellow here, I just give it my goal. I say create an informational and interactive dashboard using HTML, JavaScript, and CSS based on the information provided. That's going to be important because beneath the yellow, beneath my goal, I'm providing 10 pages of a PDF going over a prompting method called tree of thoughts. And as you can see, there is loads and loads of text because we don't have the ability to upload PDFs right now to O1. I'm just going to copy and paste in the text I want in this dashboard. Then I give it some things to include like informational tabs, a quiz tab with five test questions that dynamically change after hitting reset. Then I say, here's the information to put in the dashboard. And then I list that 10 page PDF copy and pasted. So I'm just going to copy this entire document by uh, hitting control A and control C. I'm gonna head over, make sure I'm on O1 preview, paste it in and send it off. Now it's going to be taking in all of this information in order to create the code and store this information in a dashboard for me. Now it thought about this one actually very quick. That's pretty impressive that it organized all the information and crafted that HTML dashboard with content guidelines, drafting the dashboard and uh, crafting the HTML file. Very, very cool. So what I can do is I can do the same thing I did for my heart animation. I can copy this code. I can open a folder I just created in VS Code called informational dashboard. And then I can just paste in that once I type in index.html. I'll just paste in that code that it gave me. It gave me 244 lines of code, absolutely insane. I'm going to hit control S, then I'm going to go open that file. And take a look at this. It generated me this entire website almost, going over some of the information. I have an overview tab, a methodology tab, an experiments tab, a graphs tab, and a quiz tab. Now I can even go further into this and keep prompting. So what I told it was the graphs and quiz did not show. Also add more information into each tab that helps me learn better. Because right now the structure is amazing, how quickly it created this almost website-like informational dashboard, but we need a little bit more information in here. And also we need to get these graphs generating and the quiz as well. So it said the issue with the graphs was because of the placement of the head section in the charts JS. So let me copy this updated code and then I'm just going to repaste it in there. And this time, instead of 245 lines, it generated 320. So this should be pretty awesome. I'm going to save that. And now I'm going to go back to my website and see how it looks. So if I refresh this, as you can see in the overview, many more key concepts and also just more information, a lot more information and methodology, definitely more information and experiments. The graphs are now working. So now that we know why that didn't work, we can implement that in our next prompt if doing this again. If we go to the quiz, we now have a five question quiz based on the information in our dashboard here. So I could answer them. I don't know these answers right now, but I'll hit submit. And then it tells me which ones I got correct, which ones I got wrong. An amazing way to study, an amazing way to research and learn information in an aggregated dashboard. Use case number five is to utilize problem solving paradigms in this new O1 model because it can go through so many different things at once. It can check constraints. It can ensure that the answer is non-hallucinogenic. And it also just provides you better analysis. So that's what we're going to be doing is using a problem solving paradigm in order to get some things solved. So what do I mean by a problem solving paradigm? Well, let's just take a quick look at this prompt I have and how I'm using a specific problem solving paradigm called the Pareto analysis. So I say I have some data on customer complaints from the past quarter categorized by the type of issue. I want to perform a Pareto analysis. This is my problem solving method of choice right now. Okay, we have the Pareto analysis and we want to identify which complaint categories are responsible for a majority of the customer dissatisfaction. For those of you who don't know what the Pareto analysis is, it states that 80% of a project's benefits or results are usually only achieved from 20% of the work. Conversely, 80% of the problems can be traced back to 20% of the causes. So you can use this problem solving paradigm in a large language model in order to get unique insights into your data or anything that you want analyzed with this analysis. So I give all of the issues where I'm getting all the complaints. We have login issues, slow performance, billing errors, feature requests, bug reports, and user interface confusion. And I just give O1 some simple instructions. I say, organize this data by frequency of complaints, calculate the cumulative percentage, identify the top categories 
that account for 80% of total complaints. This would be the Pareto analysis. That way I can target those categories and eliminate 80% of those complaints. And then I just tell it to provide insights. So enough of explaining the prompt. Let's get in there and let's solve this problem, right? I have all this data and we can use Pareto analysis in order to gain unique insights. So I'm going to message 01 preview, paste that in and send it off. Now, if you like this and you like the way that the Pareto analysis is working, I have 19 other problem solving paradigms in the community that used to cost $50, but I'm giving away for free in the community. So if you like this one, I highly recommend you go check those out. And what it's going to do is go super in depth. It's going to create me tables without even being asked. It's going to give me the top categories accounting for 80%, which is slow performance, bug reports, user interface, and login issues. So these are the things that I would want to tackle first because they make up the most cumulative percentage for complaints. And then it gives me some insights and recommendation on how to tackle each one of these tasks or each one of these problems rather that are making up the most complaints. Use case number six is to solve complex puzzles. So what I have is this puzzle right here. As you can see, it's a bunch of letters connecting and the puzzle that you need to figure out is a two word location. So I want ChatGPT to spell out a two word place name by traveling to each letter along each one of these lines, but you can only go through each circle once in order to accomplish this. So keep this diagram in mind because since we can't upload images, I had to craft this in a unique way in order to mimic this diagram here. So all of these letters and lines is me mimicking the diagram and the way things flow within this chart here. And I say, spell out a two word place name by traveling to each letter along the lines. You can only go through each circle once. Okay, so each one of these letters would be circled. In 01 preview, when I send it off, what you're going to notice is it's going to take a minute to think about this and really map out a solution. Okay, I've been waiting here for quite a while and it's thinking of how to actually do this. It's really, really thinking about this process. And after thinking for 62 seconds and all of the possible solutions, it finally found the route to go. It said we can spell out one fitting solution, which is Easter Island, which uses all the letters provided. And then it gives me instructions for how to spell it out using the diagram. Very good. And I recommend you give this a shot. Use case number seven is to create detailed white papers using O1. You have the ability to create research papers like never before with this new model. So I'm just going to type off a very simple prompt just to show you the prompt length, the detail, the structure, and how it's actually forming a white paper based on a topic. So I say create me a huge detailed white paper on the side effects of screen time on your eyes, health, and sleep. I'm just going to send this off just to show you the power of how a small prompt can have very awesome results. Look at this. It only thought for nine seconds, but I love that it provided me the exact date for today. It provided me a huge H1 heading, an executive summary, even it's providing a table of contents, okay? It's really going through this process. It's giving me reports and citing things by Statistica and really going in depth on the purpose of the white paper, going over all of the things that I wanted to cover and just look how long this prompt is. Look at all the references it provides. This was all in a matter of about 30 seconds and for an O1 prompt, not only did it do it very accurately, but it actually did it kind of quick. So I recommend if you need to research things, if you need to create long detailed reports or white papers, that you try out this O1 preview model and compare it to GPT-40. You will be stunned by the results and the accuracy. The next use case is solving complex math problems. So what I have here is very hard SAT questions, okay? And we have question one right here, which is basically going through this uh, temperature increase, and it wants to know which of the following must be true. And then there's three statements here based on this equation, and we have a multiple choice question. And the answer is actually D, okay? The final answer is D, which is one and two only. So we're going to throw this into O1, one of the hardest SAT questions asked. I'm just going to copy this question from question one, head over to ChatGPT, start a new chat and paste it in and see if it can solve this problem. I'm going to send it off. In the meantime, I'm going to head over to ChatGPT 4.0 and I'm going to paste in the same question and send it off. And let's see how ChatGPT 4.0 does compared to a one preview. As you can see, ChatGPT 4.0 actually got the wrong answer. It says conclusion, the correct answer is B, two only. But if we go back to the answer over on the hardest SAT math questions, it says the answer is actually D, 
one and two only, not just two only. So let's head over to O1 Preview and see if it solved this. As you can see, O1 Preview thought for only six seconds, okay? So actually not too long of a time, but it got a much more accurate answer. It answered D, which is the correct statement. So as you can see, math has just improved dramatically, and it didn't even take that much longer, okay? But GPT-40 could not solve this. Use case number nine is next level brainstorming. Brainstorming is completely changed forever because you have the ability to run through loops, run through probability of success variations, and you can do so much more with brainstorming that opens up the possibilities for business, personal life, strategizing, creative writing, really whatever it may be. We need brainstorming in all aspects of life, and this new model opens the doors for a new era of brainstorming. Now, I have an absolutely massive prompt, okay? I have one step, two step, three steps, four steps, five, six, and seven total steps. And not only that, but what I have at the very bottom here is a loop that I want this to complete. So I want it to repeat steps five through seven three times before giving me an answer. And it can do this with one single send off of a prompt. We don't have to prompt more than once. It can run through this as many times as we want. So what I'm doing here is I'm trying to brainstorm solutions to a problem I have. And it's going to run through one of my brainstorming problem solving paradigms that I've used in the past. But usually this was a manual process that required many different prompts and a lot of manual input. So what I do is I give it my problem and I give it a role. You are a professional social media posting agent. And then I want it to brainstorm viral post launches for my AI foundations community. And I say, this is going to be a Facebook advertisement. And then I give it some more information down here on what that advertisement is going to be about and some more details about my company. And then I say brainstorm solutions. Now that you understand the problem, I need you to brainstorm three solutions. Okay, then I want it to give me a probability evaluation. So for each solution listed, that it gave me in step two, I want it to give me a success probability between one and 100% for each of those solutions. Step four, we're going to exclude the losers and isolate the winner. So which one had the highest probability of success? And then this is where the loop begins. I tell it, then you need to start a brainstorming loop and run through this three different times. And the loop is basically taking the winning solution right here and brainstorming competitive solutions to go after my winner after the winner that's already been generated from this step. I want to generate competitive solutions that go up against the one winner from the previous step. And then I want to do another probability evaluation and then another exclusion and isolation of the new winner based on the probability of success. And I want it to run through steps five through seven, three times. So I'm really putting ChatGPT to the test in order to provide me with a winning advertisement strategy for my Facebook ad. So what I can do is I can send off this huge prompt and we'll let O1 do the work. It's going to get thinking, crafting engaging content, and it's going to run through my entire brainstorming solution here. So this is really next level brainstorming because we're running through multiple success cycles and variations of success in order to try to find a winning viral advertisement for AI foundations, my AI community. As you can see, it thought for 55 seconds and then it ran me through literally every step it took and ran me through this entire brainstorming paradigm. Solution one, two, three, probability evaluation. It gives me a probability of success for each of those solutions. It excluded the losers and isolated the winner. And then it brainstormed competitive solutions three different times with this brainstorming loop. Give me solution B, solution C, probability evaluation, solution A1 again. And then it gives me even more loops, excludes losers again. Look how many things it went through in order to get me to my final result. And it was doing this all automatically. And after it figured out everything, it gave me the final advertisement based on the strategy that it selected, free AI resource lead magnet. It just gives me everything I need and it went through the brainstorming process like crazy. Use case number 10 is to create in-depth curriculums with O1 Preview. Whether you're a course creator, a teacher, a consultant, maybe you're consulting yourself, whatever it is, you have the ability to create in-depth curriculums based on a certain amount of text. So what I have here is a simple prompt, a simple action command with a lot of information following behind it. So I say, I want to create a 12 module video course on chain of thought prompting in order to help people understand chain of thought prompting. And all I want right now is the outline. You can go in depth on each module 
as you get the outline, but I recommend generating outlines for curriculums first. So I say, help me outline the course curriculum with a three question quiz after each module based on the contents within that specific module. And then I say, here's the white paper I want to create these modules based around. And then I copy and pasted in a 10 page PDF with citations and sources, of course. And that's basically it, right? Since we can't upload PDFs, I'm pasting in that content right now. But ChatGPT, when using the O1 preview model, is going to be able to craft a curriculum for you based on a 10 page PDF. That's pretty awesome, right? So I'm going to paste that in here and send it off. And O1 will think about it using chain of thought prompting. As you can see it thought for 29 seconds, gave me a course title, and now it's going in depth on modules. Introduction to chain of thought prompting gives me a description of what I need to discuss in each module, along with quiz questions I can ask, which the quiz questions will help me shape my modules when follow up prompting with O1, asking it to go more in depth on each one. But what it's doing is it's providing me with all these different modules that I can make for my course based on the contents that I uploaded. And it's going much more in depth than GPT 4.0 would have gone because it's thinking about, okay, how can we shape this curriculum in order to give people a sustainable understanding? Let's open up the back end. It says reading and organizing. So it read all the information, identified the key concepts, and then structured a 12 course module. It understood the context, advanced reasoning, synthesized themes, NLP advancements, and it keeps on going on about the things that it saw and how to structure the course where people can gain a better understanding. GBT 4.0 or any other large language model is not going this deep. Use case number 11 is to create web applications. This can be useful things for work or it can be fun things like blackjack games. That's what we're going to be creating because I am a fan of blackjack, okay? So let's create a blackjack web application. I'm going to start a new chat. And as you can see, this prompt is pretty large with a lot of different commands. So again, I'm going to explain my prompt so you can understand what's going on. I'm not just going to send it off. We have a goal up top for create me a web application for what game I want, Blackjack, that uses two decks in the shoe. I want these things included in the application, okay? The ability to play Blackjack with actual functionality in two decks. The ability to either hit, stand, double down, split, etc. An indicator showing which hand I am betting on at all times. A betting system where the user starts with $1,000 and chooses the amount they want. Once they hit bet, that's when the card should be dealt in the proper blackjack format. And then I also want, above each of the buttons for hit, stand, etc., a probability of the user winning for each option if it were selected. So being able to check probabilities based on certain cards that the dealer has. And then I say I want an actual discard system and a card randomizer that works after the user hits shuffle. I say I want to run this on a local HTML file for my desktop. Beautiful. I'm going to head over to ChatGPT, make sure I'm in a one, and I'm going to send off this large prompt for creating a web application for Blackjack. I can send it off. And what I can do now is just paste this all into VS Code and just follow these instructions. So I'm going to copy my HTML, paste it in my HTML file in VS Code, scroll down, copy my CSS styling, paste it in my style.css file. That was a very nice rhyme. And I just had to mention to give me the complete JavaScript because I think me telling it to make this a step-by-step -step plan for me in VS Code, that's what it was focusing on more. And it wasn't really going as in-depth on the code as I had liked it. So what I did was just a follow-up prompt for give me the complete JavaScript in order to make this functional along with the probability scores for each of the button options. And as you can see, now this is looking like some amazing JavaScript code that's going to work. Look at all of these lines that are going into making this game come to life. I'm actually very excited to see how many lines this is. I'm going to copy this script.js code and head back to my script.js file, paste it in, and wow, 465 lines of code with zero errors right now. You know, I can't wait to try this out. I'm going to hit Control S, and then I'm going to go open that file on my desktop in my blackjack game. I'm going to open up the index and now we have blackjack. I'm going to enter my bet. Maybe I want to bet 300 and then it gives me the dealer's hand. It gives me current bet, balance, hidden card and eight of hearts. It gives me my hand, 10 of spades, two of diamonds. And it gives me the probabilities of winning. So probability of winning on hit, 71%. Probability of winning if stand, 54%, actually really good odds. So here I would definitely want to hit. I'm going to hit, hand one busted, dealer wins. And it's giving me these dynamic messages. I can't believe that. 
So I had a 71% chance of winning and I lost. So as you can see, this is awesome, right? I just created a blackjack game and I could make the styling better if I wanted. So I want to have a little fun now. I said, go crazy on the CSS to make this feel like a luxury online gambling room. And it's actually designing aesthetics for me. And it's going to use CSS in order to better the styling of this. Because right now we just have this boring styling and basically just straight HTML. And so what I did is I took that styling that it gave me this new styling over here in 01 preview and I implemented it to the CSS I hit save so now when I refresh as you can see we have a much more attractive web application here I type in 400 bet and this is just much prettier than what I had before and I could even add in the cards here and upload those files very quickly use case number 12 is to simulate realistic physics with this new O1 model. It's amazing it's actually demonstrating physics live and the way certain things react to each other. So what we're going to be doing is demonstrating Newton's first laws via a simulation. Not his first laws, but all of his laws. Basically, what I have here is a couple of instructions. I say, help me code a simulation that displays Newton's laws and the physics of them with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And then I say, I want to be able to switch between these laws with the arrow keys on my keyboard. And then I say, within each simulation, provide a functionality that allows the user to hit a button that disturbs or proves the law. I give an example of that. And then I say, make these animations repeating until the user interacts with a button and have the interaction be dynamic based on where the ball is at. I say list the laws, complete the simulations, and give me the file. Let's send this off and see how it actually does at demonstrating real life, real world physics using Newton's laws. And in the meantime, I'm going to go set up my new VS Code structure by hitting new window, making a path on my desktop. I'll just call that folder Newton, hit enter. I'm gonna open that folder that I just created, select folder, I'm gonna head back over to ChatGPT and it's still actually structuring this setup. So it's going very in depth and hopefully we can get an awesome response. While it's generating that HTML, I'm just going to name my file index.html and then I'll paste the code in here. And look at this, it's going so in depth on helping me simulate real life physics and demonstrate Newton's laws. I'm going to copy code, head back to VS Code, paste it in, hit save, head back to the desktop and let's run this thing by selecting that. So it says Newton's first law simulation, law of inertia. And I can, what I can do is I can actually use the arrows in order to go between certain laws. Now it does look a little laggy whenever I go back in between this or it goes super fast. So let's actually add a force, okay? I refresh the page, let's add a force. Boom. So an object in motion stays in motion until acted upon by another force. We can see that demonstrated right here, real life physics, right? I can go to the next one and then I can increase force and it has certain uh, things up here like mass, force, acceleration, and so on. So if I keep increasing the force, what's going to happen is this box is going to move much faster. So I can just keep on increasing the force. I'm just going to spam click this until it gets up to 100 and look how fast it's going now. The mass stays the same, but the force actually changes, which causes it to go faster when accelerating. I can go to the next law by hitting the arrow key and hitting trigger action. And now this is going to be action and reaction. So it looks like the thrust can be turned on. If I go back to that one, as you can see, thrust equals zero newtons right now. But when I trigger action, as you can see, when we went to up to five newtons, that thing just took off. Those have been 12 use cases with the new OpenAI ChatGPT-01 model. Project Strawberry is absolutely insane. If you enjoyed these use cases and you want to see more, please comment below, drop a like on this video, and subscribe to the channel in order to stay updated. And again, if you really want to gain an edge when using artificial intelligence, the AI Foundations community is the spot to be. People are starting new businesses out of this community. Actually, over six new businesses have been started since this community's released three months ago. People are increasing efficiency, making lifelong friends. We even had a in-person meetup in Phoenix two days ago, where we actually met up live with the group members, chatted about AI, made friends. This is a network that's transcending just artificial intelligence. It's a great group of people. I highly recommend you join for yourself to see what it's all about. All right, that's all I have for this video. If you enjoyed, please subscribe, like, and comment below letting me know your thoughts. With that being said, I'll see you in the next video.